A Piece of Cake Read by Julian Rind Tut I do not remember much of it. Not beforehand, anyway. Not until it happened. There was the landing at Fuca, where the Blenheim boys were helpful and gave us tea while we were being refuelled. I remember the quietness of the Blenheim boys, how they came into the mess tent to get some tea and sat down to drink it without saying anything, how they got up and went out when they had finished drinking and still they did not say anything. And I knew that each one was holding himself together because the going was not very good right then. They were having to go out too often and there were no replacements coming along. We thanked them for the tea and went out to see if they had finished refuelling our gladiators. I remember that there was a wind blowing which made the windsock stand out straight like a signpost and the sand was blowing up around our legs and making a rustling noise as it swished against the tents and the tents flapped in the wind so that they were like canvas men clapping their hands. Bomber boy's unhappy, Peter said. Not unhappy, I answered. Well, they're browned off. No, they've had it, that's all. But they'll keep going. You can see they're trying to keep going. Our two old gladiators were standing beside each other in the sand. The airmen, in their khaki shirts and shorts, seemed still to be busy with the refuelling. I was wearing a thin, white cotton flying suit, and Peter had on a blue one. It wasn't necessary to fly with anything warmer. Peter said, How far away is it? Twenty-one miles beyond Charing Cross, I answered, on the right side of the road. Charing Cross was where the desert road branched north to Mercer Matru. The Italian army was outside Mercer, and they were doing pretty well. It's about the only time, so far as I know, that the Italians have done pretty well. Their morale goes up and down like a sensitive altimeter. And right then it was at 40,000, because the Axis was on top of the world. We hung around waiting for the refuelling to finish. Peter said, It's a piece of cake. Yep, it ought to be easy. We separated, and I climbed into my cockpit. I always remembered the face of the airman who helped me to strap in. He was oldish, about forty, and bald, except for a neat patch of golden hair at the back of his head. His face was all wrinkles. His eyes were like my grandmother's eyes, and he looked as though he had spent his life helping to strap in pilots who never came back. He stood on the wing pulling my straps and said, Be careful. There isn't any sense not being careful. Piece of cake, I said. Like hell. Really, it isn't anything at all. It's a piece of cake. I don't remember much about the next bit. I only remember about later on. I suppose we took off from Fuca and flew west towards Mersa. Sample complete. Ready to continue?